Hey folks, so one of the bigger upgrades for the DJI Mini 4 Pro over its predecessor is it now has full 360 degree obstacle avoidance. Now this isn't something you want to be relying on all the time as it's not going to be 100% perfect but in a pinch it may just save the life of your drone so today we're going to be putting it to the test and i'm going to be explaining to you some of the settings that you can use with the obstacle avoidance and hopefully you'll be able to put this feature to good use and in order to access the obstacle avoidance you want to just make sure you are scrolled up to the top of the safety tab and you can see there are three options bypass brake and off Obviously off will turn off the obstacle avoidance completely. So just be careful using that. But if you want to get some close up shots of certain subjects, then you may need to put that into practice. But the main two options here are brake and bypass. Brake, as it sounds, will make sure that the drone stops before crashing into an obstacle. Whereas bypass will mean that the drone will try and find a way around an obstacle rather than yet yeah, going straight into it. Just a word of warning in my experience, brake seems to be the safest of those two, okay? Because if you have it in bypass, there may not be an easy path for the drone to find away from an obstacle and it could still end up crashing. So we're gonna start with the brake mode selected here. It's also important to note that some shooting modes, for example, sports mode, if I just switch over to that now, will give us a warning, obstacle avoidance unavailable. So it's not available in every shooting mode. That is definitely something you will need to keep an eye on. But I'm gonna put it back into normal mode. We do have that sound effect from the controller as well, just to warn us that obstacles are detected. And we also have the visual prompts on screen. So in particular, we are still close to this table. So yeah, the drone is noticing that. If we raise the height just a touch, then that moves it out of the way of those obstacles and that bleeping stops along with the visual prompts. Now remember, this is full 360 obstacle avoidance. So it shouldn't matter what angle you fly towards an obstacle at, the drone should detect it in theory. So if I just fly forwards, Yep, you can see the drone has stopped by itself. I've still got the stick pushed forwards, but it is not moving any further towards the obstacle because it has detected it. So it's really simple in that regards. And if I just move away from it and then um, let's head to it from the side. The drone is not going anywhere near it. So the obstacle avoidance works really well and backwards. Okay, and it's also worth noting that the obstacle avoidance works from above as well. So if you're about to fly up into a tree, for example, it should be detected. So what I'm going to do now is switch the obstacle avoidance action over to bypass. And we'll see what sort of difference that makes now to how the drone behaves. So let's go ahead once more as if I was going to fly into the car here. And again, the drone should avoid it but rather than just braking and stopping, it should move around. Yep, notice how it lifted, it lifted itself above. But if I carried on flying straight ahead, we've got huge amounts of trees and foliage here. The drone is going to struggle to bypass that. So that's why I say to be careful using this option because yes, in a certain situation, it is going to prevent your drone from crashing, but in other situations, and there are plenty of examples of this on the internet, it is not going to help you and you are still going to crash, whereas simply having the brake option still would have prevented those accidents. So yeah, in my experience, bypass isn't quite as helpful. So let's try some smaller obstacles, shall we? We've got this basketball hoop over here and the pole is obviously a lot thinner. So is the drone able to detect this pole? If I just lower the height a touch, it is. Okay, I was unable to fly directly into the pole there. If I just line it up a touch. Yep, you can see even by pushing the control stick straight up, the drone is moving off to the side. And if we just look at the screen, we can see it has the red obstacle avoidance mark. Yep. And if we try and go at it from the side, yeah, it's just moving all out of the way, which is really, really good. Okay, and what if I try and come at it from behind? You can see it moved over to the side once more. So the obstacle avoidance is obviously a huge feature here. 
and the DJI Mini 3 Pro, let me just lift the drone up a touch to avoid that bleeping. The DJI Mini 3 Pro only had obstacle avoidance at the front, the back, and below. It did not have side-to-side -side obstacle avoidance or obstacle avoidance from above, okay? So this is a huge improvement here with the Mini 4 Pro. And as you can see, all the testing I've just shown you, it does work very well. So look, I'm gonna head over now to this tree here and we'll see what the drone does. Yeah, it moves to the side as we would expect, but this does bring me to a bit of a warning for you guys, okay? Right now, we've got a lot of greenery on the trees, a lot of leaves. The drone is able to detect that and avoid it. Okay, as you can see, it's keeping well away from that, even in the bypass mode. But as winter starts to set in, a lot of these leaves are gonna be falling and we are going to be left with just branches. Some of those branches are really going to be quite thin. The drone does not do a great job at detecting those branches. Okay, so in the wintry months when a lot of the trees have shed their leaves, do be careful, even when using obstacle avoidance, if you are flying around them, because it is not going to, the sensors on the drone are not going to be able to pick up those smaller branches and you will still have crashes with the obstacle avoidance enabled. So for now, I'm going to go back into brake mode. For example, we have the tree up here. If I just fly straight ahead, okay, the drone brakes all by itself. In bypass mode, it's really going to struggle to find a path through that tree which is where the shortcomings of bypass mode do come into play. So folks, the obstacle avoidance on the DJI Mini 4 Pro, really helpful feature, especially if you are trying to capture some more risky shots and you are not at a, not at a greater altitude, so those obstacles will come into play a little bit more. This is where the Mini 4 Pro is going to outshine its predecessors, especially I think the Mini 2, because that had no obstacle avoidance. It was a fantastic drone and still is, but obviously you can just Take a little bit more of a chance with the Mini 4 Pro. You still need to be careful. No obstacle avoidance is ever going to be 100%, but it obviously is going to be much better than having none at all. So folks, thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe for more DJI Mini 4 content, and I'll see you next time.